Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pass any CompTIA exam. I'm Ron from itmedicine.com and my job is to get each and every one of you guys certified. So the first thing you need to do is just a little bit of research about the actual exam you're trying to take. So you need to know things like how long the exam is, how many questions are on an exam, and how much the exam costs. So the last thing I would want you to do is spend countless hours studying, trying to figure stuff out, trying to research, doing practice tests, doing all this different stuff, just to find out you don't have enough money for the actual exam. So I wanna drive this point home about the price. You will be surprised how many people spend hours and hours and hours and hours just to find out that the actual exam cost is outside their price range. Now you can go to YouTube University, you can do other free things, but no matter what, you cannot get away from paying for the actual exam. So just make sure that you know how much the exam costs that you're going after. So the second thing you need to focus on is PBQs. So PBQ stands for Performance Based Question. Now performance based questions are also known as simulations. So performance based questions aren't just a generic question and answer. These types of questions are going to present a problem and you have to actually perform the solution. Okay, now it can be a myriad of topics depending on your exam, the exam type, but the PBQs most often are the first things you're gonna see on the actual exam. So a lot of times people go inside the exam and this kind of throws them completely off. Not my students, cause that's one of the things I drive home. Hey man, you gonna have simulations first. Hey man, you are gonna have simulation first. Hey man, you're gonna have simulations first. So simulations, PBQs, performance-based questions, are scaled and are worth way more points than any other question. So on a lot of exams, you may get three to five PBQs. You gotta make sure you're paying extra close attention to these PBQs. As I always tell all my students in the Zero to Hero program and even in the Winner's Circle, if you get to the PBQ and you have no idea what the hell it's talking about, don't know what you're supposed to do, just skip it, Go through the questions and hopefully as you're going through the questions, as your brain is warming up, you can think like, oh, okay, I can go back and answer those PBQs. But the PBQs are super important. Basically, if you fail all the PBQs, you're probably gonna fail the exam. Number three, be aware of your time. No matter what kind of exam you take, it's gonna be a timed exam, meaning that you can run out of time. You can run out of time before you've answered all of the questions. So you have to be really cognizant of how much time you have left. Speaking about time, the time for you to get into the Zero to Hero program and the Winter Circle is right now. So if you ever seen my face before, if you ever heard my voice before, you should already know we're getting people certified every day. What certifications are people getting? They get an A+, Net+, plus, Security+, plus, all in 90 days, nine zero. So if you wanna go from zero to hero or become a part of the winner circle, make sure that you enroll below. Let's get back to the video. Now, believe it or not, gang, some people actually run out of time on the exam. That is inexcusable. That is inexcusable. Oh man, I ran out of time, I had 20 questions left. Oh, I ran out of time, I had 10 questions left. The timer, right? There's a timer inside of the actual test, the actual exam. And it's, you know, counting down the whole time. So you need to make sure you're reading the question and looking up at that timer. Reading the question and looking up at that timer, right? You gotta make sure that you don't run out of time. Give yourself a fair shot at the actual exam. To me, if you're so locked in, so laser focused that you didn't notice this big ass clock that's counting down, you probably didn't notice the right answer when you was inside of the exam on the actual questions. So take a deep breath, relax. You studied. That's what you're here for. Pick the right question, pick the right answer and just move on. 
Last but not least, don't change your answers. So some people run out of time. Other people have a lot of time left. So let's say that you rock through the whole shebang a bang. You went through the entire exam and you got 20 or 30 minutes left. And you just looking like, wait a minute, something don't seem right. Why the hell I got so much time left? I would not suggest that you go through every question, every answer, comb through, second guess yourself, and change a bunch of stuff. Now, if you're changing one or two answers, that's cool. But if you notice that you're changing 15, 20 answers, I would not recommend it. So with all that time left, like I said, you'll be second guessing yourself. And from my students and in my own testing experience, those answers popped out to you for a reason. So I would say always go with your first mind, unless it's something that you just know is just blatantly wrong. If you're in there changing 15, 20 questions, that is all bad, no bueno. And another thing, you getting finished early is not an indication that you went too fast and not an indication that you did something wrong. Maybe you studied good enough. Maybe you had the right material. Maybe that is a good thing, right? So like I said, I would suggest do not change your answers. Now do me a favor, watch my last video, which is going to help you break into the tech field. Watch my entire playlist on how to break into the tech field. We got beginner courses. We got a lot of stuff in there that will help you level up in the tech field. Of course, if you haven't done so, subscribe to this video, like it, but most importantly, share it with somebody who can benefit from it. Other than that, I'll see you in class.